I'm Mark Chalero, the owner of MS Classic Cars. Today, I'm sitting behind the wheel of an absolutely stealth 1966 Chevrolet Chevelle 300 Custom that I have nicknamed the Black Sheep. Just to start off this video, uh, this is a non-rehearsed video. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of information that I forget during this presentation, so please visit our website at msclassiccars.com for a complete description with tons of photos. We really spend a lot of time putting together our listings so we can be as transparent and as informative as possible. To talk a little bit about uh, the story of this particular car here, it's a very interesting one. Um, I actually got a phone call from a gentleman who lived in Rhode Island uh, in September of 2014. Uh, he said that he had a beautiful Chevelle uh, that had been restored, but it needed to be completely refreshed. Uh, so one of my uh, employees, one of my good friends, Carl Almeida and I, uh, we drove to his house, saw this car, we fell in love with it. Uh, we normally don't do projects or cars that need restoration at MS Classic Cars, uh, but we could not pass this opportunity. Uh, so this vehicle went into one of our warehouses. Um, we didn't actually start touching it until probably somewhere around 2016 or 17. Um, and then what we did is we worked on it as we could, um, and we essentially did a full restoration on this car from top to bottom. Uh, Carl uh, deserves a lot of credit because most of this was done by him and his bare hands. He kind of designed it, uh, and I think he did a fabulous job. Uh, so again, I want to congratulate Carl Amita, uh, who's been uh, with us for a long time at MS Classic Cars. Uh, I consider him a good friend. So let's talk a little bit about the car. Uh, I'm going to reference these notes uh, that I have here, and then I'm going to show you some of the documentation just to talk a little bit about the history of this car. As the VIN number indicates, this car was built in Fremont, California. As I mentioned earlier, it's a 66 uh, Chevelle 300. If, for people who don't know uh, really what separates uh, the 300 model from everything else is this infamous uh, post right here. You might hear people say post. A lot of guys love the post uh, in the center there. Uh, gives it a completely different look. Um, this vehicle was, again, a two-door sedan. It was born with a six-cylinder engine. As the original documents, which I'm going to show you here in a minute, indicate the car was sold new at D. Ziana Chevrolet, located in Riverside, California, on December 31st. 1965 to Laverne Schur uh, line, who was the owner at least until the 1990s. That's a pretty significant amount of time from the mid 60s until the uh, late 90s, mid 90s. Uh, so it was a one owner car during that entire time frame. Uh, there's a ton of documentation here that's in this binder uh, that kind of just uh, documents, again, ownership history. Uh, so, some of that information we have is we have the GM inspection and adjustment schedule forms, 
This is again, original documentation. We have the owner's manual. We have the warranty card, which is referenced as the protector plate. That's what most people know those as. California title application. There's five State Farm insurance cards. There's 12 California registrations from 1965 to 1975. There's one from 92 and there's one from 93 uh, and some miscellaneous receipts. So here's uh, the new binder that we have created for this vehicle. Um, here's the owner's manual. Here's the protector plate. Again, all of this information is listed in our uh, listing on our website at msclassiccars.com so you can really see better photos of all this stuff. I'm just kind of going through it quickly with you now. Uh, what I like to do is I like to break down the VIN number on these cars for people. Uh, I go to chevellestuff.com, uh, which is a great website. So I printed that form here, which is included. This again is all of the original information that I just rattled off. Uh, that is included in this vehicle. I put everything in plastic sleeves uh, so the new owner can have this and they can add uh, you know, invoices and receipts for things that they do to the car down the road and then the binder can stay with the vehicle. Uh, one other comment before I get into uh, the presentation of the car. Normally what I like to do is I like to show an invoice of all the work that we do. Uh, we only purchase number one and number two condition vehicles. We're very proud to always say to everybody uh, that we come in contact with that we're the only classic car dealership in the country who methodically services every vehicle we sell to the highest level. We document the work with an invoice. We detail these cars to the best uh, they can be detailed to. And then of course we do these presentations and sell them. Um, this particular vehicle, because it was more of a restoration, we don't have like an invoice uh, per se right now that basically shows you what we did to the car like we normally would do because essentially this whole entire car uh, was gone through from start to finish, um, which I'll get into now. So let's start with the uh, exterior. Um, the reason that I nicknamed the car the Black Sheep, I had to think of something really cool to call this car because it has a very, very unique look. So as I put in my description and opened off this, uh, this whole thing here, um, by definition, this that word black sheep is used to describe a member of a group that's different than the rest. So besides the fact that this vehicle is a post, uh, which you don't see a ton of Chevelle 300 posts, it also has a very, very uh, mean look to it. It's very quiet. Uh, so again, today with uh, even the, some of the cars that we own, the cars that we've sold, the cars that we have coming up for sale, a lot of these vehicles that are restored today uh, are done to uh, you know a high level and they're very contemporary. Uh, this particular vehicle is still done to a very high level, but it looks just very, uh, again, simple. That's the best way I can put it. Uh, and when I get into this uh, exterior uh, presentation, you'll get a better idea. Once you see more of the video and you see the pictures, you'll clearly agree with me that it is the black sheep for sure. Uh, so let's get into some of the details here. So first thing about the body on this car, uh, I can't comment enough on how beautiful the body is. The body is extremely straight. It's got great gap lines. The hood opens awesome and closes nice. The doors open and close nice. The deck lid opens and closes nice. Carl did a really good job with all the fitment of all the panels. It does have a cowl hood. That cowl hood gives it a very sporty look in the front, really puts the icing on the cake. So when you get the cowl hood in combination with the uh, center post, it's like a perfect, uh, perfect deal there. Of course, uh, when we got the car, the car was painted black. We had to, of course, repaint the car in black. So this car has been completely repainted. Uh, the guys in the detail department did a great job uh, detailing it uh, to a real deep, uh, brilliant shine. I can't say enough about the paint on the car. Um, all of the glass uh, has been uh, replaced. It's all new, it's all tinted, it's in beautiful condition. Uh, it just looks absolutely amazing um, on this car. What Carl wanted to do again was he wanted to make it look very stealth, very mean. So what he did is he painted all of the trim uh, black uh, just so it kind of looked very dark, I guess would be the way to put it. Um, and then he also powder coated uh, these mirrors, which are on both side, uh, driver's side and passenger side. He also powder coated the door handles, which look awesome, again, to finish off that uh, real dark look. 
Uh, rather than doing what a lot of people would normally do, and that would be to paint the grill black and to paint the bumpers black, he wanted to just give it a little bit of pop in the front end. So what he did is he painted the grill silver. He added a unique Chevrolet emblem to the center of the grill, which I thought was very tastefully done. We've gotten a lot of comments from people about how he designed that front grill. He used Optronic uh, headlights. Those are LED headlights. Uh, they have uh, just a lot of functionality with turn signals and daytime running lights and things like that. Uh, we have pictures of the car with the lights on. I'll go ahead and turn the lights on during this video for you as well. Um, what he did with the bumper, he actually shaved out the bolts and he shaved out the turn signals to give it a very smooth look uh, in the front. Painted it the same color as the grill. It came out absolutely killer. So that is definitely one of the highlights of this vehicle is when you're looking at it straight on, it just has a really uh, mean uh, appearance that's very simple. He then decided to do the same thing to the rear bumper to kind of make it match front and back. He did the taillight bezels in the same color as well. So it just balanced perfectly. Can't give him enough credit for doing an outstanding job on the body of this car. And then of course the car is debadged uh, again to make it more of a sleeper, if you will. Uh, now the car sits rather than putting, we were thinking about using, you know, maybe torque thrust wheels, maybe ordering a set of custom wheels for this car. And then the more that we thought about it, we really wanted to keep it error correct. So he chose to go with these wheels on the vehicle now, which are 17 inch steel wheels. Um, it does actually have um, uh, center hubcaps uh, that are, uh, you know, kind of a, a painted silver material, just like the bumpers were and so forth. And then also the Chevrolet black logos he put in the center caps, which I think really put the icing on the cake. So again, you got to check out this car, look at all the photos. It's got a killer look. It's got a great stance, something that I'm really, uh, really impressed with. Now, sitting in the interior of this car, uh, again, because the outside was kept very simple, uh, but slightly customized. We wanted to do the same thing with the interior. Uh, so when we got this car, it actually had uh, this burgundy color interior, which is very unique. A lot of the times with Chevelles, you'll find black interior, you'll find uh, red interior. We've owned a few Chevelles with even blue interior. But this color here is kind of like a burgundy color, very unique color. We wanted to leave it alone. So the headliner is in beautiful condition. Uh, the sun visors are in beautiful condition as well. They're well padded. It's got this custom uh, rear view mirror that's black, which kind of just fits the uh, theme of the exterior of the car. It's got this really nice burgundy dash pad. Um, it does have black trim on top of all of the panels around the entire interior that's separated with a nice chrome molding. And then of course the entire front fascia of the dash is also painted black. And this is more of a kind of a satin black. Uh, so again, it's the perfect combination for this car. Um, it does have custom gauges. Uh, we, we came up with the gauge system here that was a little bit different than your typical auto meter uh, gauges that are more, uh, you know, they, they stick out a little bit from the actual dash itself with bezels. This is more of a clean cut uh, deal here. I thought it was the perfect choice. They refer to these gauges, uh, if you want to Google them and check them out, um, VHX is what they refer to them as. Uh, then we went with a black I did it steering column. This is a tilt steering. You can see how I can move the steering wheel up and down really nicely. Uh, it's got custom levers on the, the tilt steering column, and it also has a billet specialties 14-inch uh, uh, formula steering wheel. Again, uh, perfect selection as far as the color. He went with a black wheel, and then it's got these little silver accents here that, again, complement the accents in the interior. When you're sitting in here, I think it was the perfect combination uh, to do the interior in. Uh, again, I tip my hat to him. Now, getting into the door panels. These door panels are completely custom. These are not factory door panels. He went with a real simple door panel. It does have a few little custom touches, these little uh, lines that are at the bottom of the door panel. They get a little bit longer as it goes down. Then he used black uh, billet hardware. I'm referring to the uh, window rollers, the door handles. It's got a custom um, black uh, armrest here with a burgundy pad on it. Um, he went with black carpeting. 
uh, which really kind of just finished off the interior. Uh, we ordered a set of custom carpeted Chevelle floor mats. Uh, we put Billet Specialties pedals down below, so you'll see in the pictures, it really just flows perfectly. The other thing that we were thinking about doing, we were thinking about maybe doing a console with bucket seats. And then the more that we looked at the exterior of the car and the more that we thought about the interior, we decided to keep it uh, simple again and go with that sleeper look. So we left uh, the brand new uh, upholstered uh, bench seat, which is in beautiful condition, super comfortable. Uh, you got a lot of room on here. There are brand new black seat belts on here as well. There's brand new seat belts in the back as well. Of course, the back seat, you know, matches the front seat perfectly. Uh, so again, I cannot say enough about this interior. Uh, you'll clearly see in all of our photos how great of a job he did. And to put the icing on the cake, he put the Hearst equipped uh, logo on the front of the glove box uh, side door there uh, because this car does have a Hearst shifter and it does have a Hearst uh, black shift knob as well. Now, getting into uh, the trunk compartment, he did a really nice job in the trunk compartment. I uh, just wanna make sure I reference my notes here. Um, he did put a factory style trunk mat back there. It does have a full size spare tire as well. Um, but getting into where the fun uh, really continues in this engine compartment, um, a lot of time was spent on the engine bay of this vehicle. So you will notice uh, the first thing that he did uh, on the firewall, the inner fenders and the radiator support is he treated it with a textured uh, type of paint, which is a slightly different shade uh, than the exterior to kind of break it up a little bit. Thought he did a great job with that. That's a great material. Um, because it's very durable, you can wipe it clean really easily. Uh, when you sometimes paint the engine bays high gloss, uh, sometimes you have to do more detailing in there as time goes on. So he chose to, uh, again, keep this very simple in the engine compartment. Great job with that. You'll notice with the hood, um, it's held up by black uh, Eddy Motorsport hinges. Those are aluminum hinges. Again, they match the steering wheel. They match the theme of the car. I thought that was a great selection that's got black wipers, as you can see here. Um, again, talking about the engine itself, the engine in this vehicle is a 454. It has 502 rectangular port heads, double roller timing chain. Wanna make sure I reference my notes so I uh, hit everything on the head here to make sure I don't miss anything. Um, the engine was actually, of, of course, rebuilt. Then it was outfitted with a Edelbrock Victor Junior intake. Uh, we made the decision to put those really sweet carbon fiber valve covers on there with custom breathers. Uh, you don't really see those valve covers very often on these big blocks. We just thought it, they were simple, gave it a little bit of character. And then again, those breathers really kind of match the theme of the car. Um, we actually added um, a 750 CFM Holly Street Brawler carburetor. Uh, our guys in service are big fans of that carburetor. Uh, we've got the Chevrolet air cleaner on there with the Edelbrock filter. Russell braided fuel lines. It's got an HEI electronic ignition system, Taylor wire separators. Uh, we put custom pulleys on the motor. We even uh, heat shrunk the clamps and everything for the radiator in some of the other areas in the car. Um, it does have a show panel that goes over the front uh, in front of the radiator that looks really, really good. Um, again, that radiator um, is a really heavy duty uh, radiator with dual electric fans, all aluminum. I think he made a great selection with that. Um, it even has an aluminum overfill canister for uh, the radiator as well. So again, you can see all the photos. I think we probably listed 30 or 40 photos of just the engine compartment itself. You can clearly see the time that was spent, every single nut and bolt. Carl is methodical when it comes time for nuts and bolts. Everything has to match. He doesn't want uh, cheap bolts everywhere. So he goes above and beyond with a lot of the work that he does for us uh, again. So the engine itself breathes through a custom uh, hooker ceramic header into a two and a half inch Flowmaster exhaust system. When I start the car in a minute, you're gonna hear how awesome it sounds. It runs really, really good. And to kind of put the icing on the cake to the engine compartment, um, of course, we didn't wanna go with a black battery. We wanted to kind of bring a little life to the engine base. We went with a red top Optum battery. Uh, those are great batteries, uh, no fluid to worry about spilling, things of that nature. Um, and of course, you can see the Willwood master cylinder that we used as well. 
Uh, again, everything just kind of flows. Uh, sometimes you have to spend a few minutes and pay attention to how things flow on a car, but a lot of thought goes into stuff like that. So as an example, if you look at the Willwood Master, you can see the color that Willwood uses, uh, not only on the name, but on the uh, lines that they use around it. And you will notice that that matches the breathers, the breathers match this, and that matches this, and blah, blah, blah. So anyway, very good job as far as all that goes. Now, the engine is coupled to a M22 Rock Crusher 4-speed transmission. For anybody uh, that knows transmissions, that was a really, really good transmission back in the day. Um, a lot of guys love the M22s because they're just awesome to, uh, to use. They operate really well. They're strong. They handle power. Uh, so I thought that was a, a great selection for transmission for this car. And then when we get into the uh, rear end, um, it's a Ford 9-inch rear end. Anybody, again, who knows rear ends, uh, Ford makes a great rear end. That 9-inch is used in many applications. Um, of course, it's a posi rear end. It does have Mosier axles, and it does have 3D9 gears. Uh, so again, the, the drivetrain combination in this car is a really, really good one. And again, it was kept uh, to be very similar to what it would have been back in the day. Again, this was not a contemporary build. Uh, this was more of a nostalgic resto mod, if you will, uh, restoration. So again, great job with everything. Uh, the undercarriage was completely stripped. Uh, he spent countless, countless hours, hours turn into days, days turn into months, on the undercarriage of this car, cleaned it all, sanded it all, got everything down to metal, and then he painted it uh, with the same type of paint uh, that you would find in the engine compartment. It's more of a textured paint. Some people refer to it as Rhino Liner. Uh, it's very, very durable. It lasts forever. It's easy to clean. He did a great job with all of that. Uh, so again, uh, talking about um, just real quickly here, the steering, the car does have power steering. It operates really, really nicely. Um, it does have power front disc brakes, um, which work excellent as well. And then of course, all the suspension was replaced and slightly upgraded, such as the front drop spindles and the rear springs. Uh, so again, everything in this car has either been restored or it's been replaced. Um, just enough was done to make this car exciting, make it bad to the bone and super fun to enjoy. So that's enough about this uh, car. I'm gonna go ahead and start it. I'm gonna let you listen to how beautiful it runs. Again, can't say enough about it. Um, at MS Classic Cars, uh, we stand behind every vehicle we sell, so feel very, very confident uh, that we've gone through every vehicle mechanically uh, as we have done with this particular vehicle here. Uh, please sign up for our VIP email blast if you have not done so already. That is the best way to follow us. Uh, we also ask you to follow us on social media. We're on all the networks regarding social media. We really appreciate your interest and appreciate you watching this video. So I'm gonna go ahead and start it. Let you listen how beautiful she runs. Fires right up. Foots off the gas. Look, look at this thing. Purring like a kitten. Can't make that stuff up. We appreciate you watching. Thanks again. Long live the black sheep, baby.